Hello and welcome to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we kick off the fall sports season for 2021. We've got plenty of highlights from football, soccer, cross country, and more. After the toughest sports season in recent memory, the 2021 fall season had no delays and stadiums were back to full capacity. It finally felt normal. And now the Lake Orion Dragons could focus on just playing their games without as much of a worry as last season. The varsity football team got their season started on August 26 against the same team that knocked them out the playoffs the previous year, Utica Eisenhower. The Falcons came into the game with high hopes for their season and the Dragons were looking for a redemption game that will help get their season started as they prepare for a difficult 2021 schedule. This game would be a physical and mental test for the Dragons as temperatures had been approaching 90 degrees at kickoff. Lake Orion had to punt the ball away on their opening drive, but were able to stop the Eagles on a fourth down attempt, giving the ball back to Lake Orion. Dragons were able to get on the board first as a pitch play to Stephen Brown from the six yard line allowed him to tiptoe the sideline and dive his way into the end zone for the touchdown. The Eagles' following drive got some momentum for Eisenhower as they got down to the five-yard line when quarterback Preston Crum threw a nice pass to Hayden Bills on a fade for their first score of the evening, giving the Eagles the 7-6 lead due to Lake Orion missing the PAT. Lake Orion's next drive was a grinded-out drive where they continually ran the ball, fighting for each first down until they got down to the four-yard line where Nasir Liddell ran it in for the touchdown, taking the lead back from the Eagles 13-7. Dragons defense was able to force the Eagles into a punt on their next drive, so the Dragons were able to get the ball back late in the second quarter. Kyler Carson was able to hit CJ Witt on a nice short pass over the middle from 20 yards out that took the Dragons down to the one yard line where Carson ran it in, giving Lake Orion the 20 7 lead going into the half. In the second half, the game slowed down a bit as the Dragons were able to muster up only two field goals going up 26 7 until there were just five minutes left in the game when Billy Roberson got the handoff from Kyler Carson where he broke past one defender, bounced the outside, and ran it for the 75-yard touchdown run. We caught up with Coach Blacksock after a good win to start the season. You told me in pregame, it's what you wanted to see out of your team. Are you happy with what you saw tonight? Yeah, you know, it's it, we're gonna smile that we won, right? Because these, these wins are way too hard to get to not enjoy. I've learned that over the 24 years that we need to enjoy them when we get them. But at the same time, you know, I think we saw a lot of things that we can still get better at. You know, some things to clean up, you know, a typical first game stuff, some uh, some misalignments offensively, you know, some some miscommunication things, and, and we'll get better at those. Like, like Coach Bell has always said, uh, how good can you get between week one and week two? The great teams make the big jump between one and two, and that's going to be our focus after we smile about this one for about 24 to 36 hours. The following week, the Dragons look to continue their strong start as they travel to North Farmington. North Farmington is ranked as one of the top teams in the state, and the Dragons knew they would have to give it their all in this one. For a bit of history, these two schools had never faced off before this game on September 3rd. North Farmington looked to be the real deal in this game as sophomore quarterback Ryan Shelby threw three touchdown passes, with two of them going to senior Aaron Rice, who committed to Navy for college. Jasper Beeler, tailback for the Raiders, also ran for two scores, which led to the Raiders' win 44-22. For the Dragons, Kyler Carson only attempted nine passes and completed five of them. C.J. Witt was the first Dragon to score on the night and finished with 30 yards on the ground and also had 40 receiving yards on three catches. In the middle of the third quarter, the Dragons were down 6-44, to so both teams went to their second units. But this was a good sign for the Dragons as their reserves came in and put together a few scoring drives with junior Connor McCartan throwing a touchdown pass to Joey DeBrinkett and also another touchdown with a quarterback keeper. The Dragons run game looked really good in this one as they were able to average 4.9 yards per carry, but when they fell behind on the scoreboard, they were forced to change the game plan. On September 10th, the Dragons would look to rebound against Southfield a and as they would once again find themselves on the road. However, the Dragons were once again 
in the hole early in this game, forcing Lake Orion to ditch their game plan of controlling the ball once again. Southfield would take this one pretty easily, 40-21. to Lake Orion looks to get back on track as they get three straight home games, but all of them will be tough and test the Dragons as Oxford, West Bloomfield, and Stony Creek will be on the slate coming up. The outstanding Lake Orion volleyball team returned to action after another deep playoff run in 2020. So going into 2021, the expectations for this team once again were of high hopes. The Dragons lost a few seniors once again from the previous year, so the keys to the team were handed over to junior Nina Horning, who is committed to playing for the Cincinnati Bearcats in college. To start the season, Lake Orion would enter themselves into some preseason tournaments and invitationals. On August 21st, Lake Orion would open the season hosting a tournament that had plenty of talented teams in attendance. The Dragons would go on to win the tournament by beating Lakeland, Flushing, Detroit Country Day, and Northville. Dragons opening up the season with a lot of noise. Then on August 24th, the Dragons would be in another preseason quad at Oxford against some familiar faces. The Dragons would run into their first losses on the season in this one as they would drop sets to Clarkson and Notre Dame Prep. However, they would get a win over Oxford. Saturday, August 28th would be an invite at Mercy High School, and Lake Orion would find a win against Flushing 2-0, but would drop sets to Mercy and Detroit Country Day with scores of 1-2. September 11th, the Dragons were at Novi High School for one more tournament. In this one, the Dragons were able to knock off Wald Lake Northern 2-1 and Grand Haven 2-0. They would end up losing to Novi 0-2 and Celine 1-2. On September 18th, the Dragons would be in their final quad warm-up before league play begins. They were able to defeat Rochester 2-0 and Seaholm 2-1, but they would lose their final match against Notre Dame Prep 2-0. League play begins for the Dragons on September 21st against the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks at the Dragon Fieldhouse. Dragon Broadcasting students will be live-streaming the game, and be sure to tune in to them at dragonbroadcasting.org. We will be sure to have you up to date on all the latest news surrounding this tough volleyball team. The Lake Orion Varsity Boys soccer team started off their 2021 season with five straight wins. They won an early season tournament at Avondale as they took out Avondale, Cast Tech, and Sterling Heights. They then got their first home game of the season against Utica. They were able to take Utica down 4-0, and two days later they traveled to Utica Ford, where they also took them down 4-2. On Saturday, August 28th, the Dragons had another tournament, this one at Lapeer High School. This tournament was a bit tougher for the Dragons than the Avondale tourney, and Lake Orion faced off against Troy, Berkeley, and Waterford Mott. The Dragons were able to beat Mott 5-0, but dropped the games to Troy and Berkeley, where they were unable to find the net in either game. On August 31st, the Dragons were on the road to face rival Oxford. On paper, this game was Oxford favored, as they are in the OAA red, while the Dragons are in the white. However, with any rivalry game, there is always a chance to beat the odds. This would prove to be a great warm-up as the Dragons prepared for league play coming up on September 8th against Groves. The Dragons' strong defense showed up in this game and they were able to outshoot the Wildcats in the game. Unfortunately though, the Wildcats were able to stop the Dragons on their attempts. This game became quite contested as both teams had good corner kicks that were so close to producing goals, but to no avail. The game ended in a 0-0 tie. Lake Orion then had their first league play game at home against Groves on September 8th. This was a really good test for the Dragons as Groves is always a competitive opponent. Once again, it was a great display of Lake Orion's strong defense as they were able to hold the Falcons to zero goals in the first half. Although Groves maintained most of the ball control in the first half, they surrendered the first goal of the game as Lake Orion was able to convert on a penalty kick. As the game moved on to the second half, it became a little chippy as both teams were receiving yellow cards and given penalty kicks. That was how Groves was able to get on the board as well to tie the game at one. Right after that goal, Groves was able to get the ball back and had a bit of a fast break where they were able to get a beautiful cross pass into a goal. This one mistake by the Dragons defense was the game decider as right after the Dragons were able to lock back in to their normal tough defense, Lake Orion would lose a tough one, one to two. The Dragons now sit at six, four and one. Although they started the season hot, they did come back down to earth just a little bit, but definitely are showing some great signs this season. Their defense, for one thing, is fantastic and did not give up many goals as they were always in the games. The harder part is getting better ball control to give themselves a few more opportunities to score and also converting when they get in the zone. Given this team of 25 has 12 seniors, they have the experience and the toughness to give themselves a chance to make some noise in the white. 
as they have already matched their six-win season from a year ago. The Dragons soccer JV, B, JVA, and varsity teams have been in action since the third week of August and have been enjoying success on the pitch. ONTV cameras were on hand for the JVB match against Warren De La Salle on Tuesday, September 7th. This day was supposed to have all LOHS teams in action, but with nasty weather forecasts for the evening, the JVA and varsity matches were postponed. The JVB is made up of mostly freshmen and sophomores, and were ready to play jumping out to a lead against the Pilots in the first half. Games conditions were on everyone's mind when the JVA and varsity matches were postponed due to the forecast of foul weather rolling into the area. The JVB teams were ready for action and started the match under warm but very windy conditions. The Dragons controlled the match from the opening kick, dominating play on the pilot's side of the field. The offensive pressure was such that De La Salle only had a handful of touches in the Lake Orient end, and none of that resulted in a shot on goal. The Dragons got on the board at the 9.50 mark of the first when Luke Wilson buried a shot just outside the box. The Dragons would add to their lead when Luke Wilson scored his second tally of the half from almost the exact location as his first, Dragons up 2 to nothing. De La Salle continued to struggle on offense, recording not one shot on goal in the first half of play. The Dragons threatened multiple times, and the Pilots netminder had to stay on his head to keep the match close. The pause in the scoring came to an end with a flurry right before halftime when the Dragons' number 17, Ben Van Lindham, tallies two goals in just 22 seconds to blow the game open for the Dragons. This offensive flurry was too much for the Pilots, who were thankful for the halftime break to stop the bleeding. The second half saw De La Salle come out with renewed energy playing into the Dragon end and finding a couple of shots that were turned away easily by the Lake Orion defense. The Dragons would seal the game after another flurry of goals at the 13-27 and 12-09 mark of the second. The final goal of the evening would be made by Anthony DiMiano with just four seconds remaining to secure the Mercy Rule victory. The JVB team is undefeated on the season at 6-0 and continues to improve every match. The full game can be seen on ONTV's Education Channel on Comcast Channel 22, AT&T U-verse Channel 99, and on ONTV's Video On Demand service at orionontv.org. Don't forget you can also watch ONTV on your Roku device in HD quality. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup and search for the ONTV logo. The cross-country season got underway a week before school started at LOHS. The 2021 edition of the LO cross-country teams have been training since the middle of June. The men's team is coming off of a solid MHSAA regional performance and a Division I state meet berth in 2020, and they are looking to ride a seasoned senior class to the top of several podiums this season. The Lady Dragons have said goodbye to Sophie Novak, the top female runner in school history. The team is very young and looking for their next standout course leader. Could it be a freshman? It just might be. The Dragons rolled out to Anchor Bay High School on Thursday, September 7th. Anchor Bay has hosted their early bird invitational for several years, but never this early in the morning, on a weekday. Seven schools took part in this tune-up race, which was flat and fast. This course is also the site of 2021 MHSAA regional meet, so it was also a preview of what the Dragons will be facing at the end of the season when they look to qualify for the state meet. The Lady Dragons got off the line at 10 a.m. on the nose. This race was held as an open, which means there was no JV race. All runners were grouped together. The Lady Dragons were looking for leadership from a trio of returning varsity sophomores, but two of this trio sat out of the race, which gave us an introduction to freshman Addison Verlinden from Walden Middle School. Verlinden led all Dragon runners from start to finish in her varsity debut. Another pleasant surprise was the addition of senior Alex Bowes, who joined the cross-country team to rehab her knee injured during the varsity soccer season last spring. Though Bose has made her mark as a Dragon soccer player, her running credentials are very strong as she holds the 3200 meter school record at Walden Middle School. The race was dominated by Anchor Bay's three-time state meet qualifier senior, Cora Kaloji, finishing the 5K course with an impressive time of 19 minutes, 45 seconds. Her Linden was second in 2058 and Bose was third in 2106. Solid performances for both runners. Other medal winners for Lake Orion were sophomore Lauren Demi, 9th and senior Kendall Osborne, 10th. No team scoring was kept for this tune-up meet, but first-year Dragon head coach Kim Reynas, who has extensive college coaching experience, has to be encouraged by this athlete's drive. The Lady Dragons' first home OAA Jamboree will be on Tuesday, September 14th at Lake Orion High School at 4.30 p.m. 
The men's cross country team was by far the largest team to compete at the early bird. Led by seniors Adam Hayfleet, Clayton Kuyper, Hong Bing Tang, Will Hoovner, and Ronnie Leonard, the Dragons are coming off of a Division I 17th place finish at the state meet in 2020 and looking for more. This is one of the most experienced senior classes Coach Stanford has fielded in years. They have been four-year varsity runners together and have outstanding chemistry, race knowledge, and a work ethic needed to be successful at the Division I level. The Dragons were off in a heap and quickly showed that they mean business in 2021. Kayfully quickly set the lead pace and never let it up over the 5K course. Kuiper and Hong Bing Tang were not far behind, and the rest of the field was playing catch-up at the two-mile mark. Just one runner, Justin Roos, from Fraser High School, could keep pace with the lead Dragons. This race was also the first race for many freshmen and sophomore runners on the team. The fast course was a welcome change from the Hilly Lake Orion course the athletes are used to. Fast times were recorded by many Dragons. The final stretch of the race concluded on the Anchor Bay track, which made for some close finishes. Hayfley, though really was never challenged, he led wire to wire in 16:26, which was a lifetime best. In fact, the top three finishers were all Dragons, and out of the top 15 to earn medals, nine would go to LO runners. If it wasn't for Fraser's Rose who placed fourth, the Dragons would have run the perfect cross country race, whereas a single team places their runners all in the top seven places. Not a bad start to the season. The early bird was a fine tune-up for the Dragons as they looked ahead to the Avril Invitational on September 11th at Kensington Metro Park, a challenging course where best times go to die. Due to COVID, many of the familiar cross-country invitational races were canceled in 2020. With vaccinations and safety practices well in hand, the Avril invite was on. It was a welcome addition to the schedule as Kensington is also the site of the Oakland County Championship meet, which is also back in 2021. Let's start with the Lady Dragons who were first to race in the large school division. 12 teams were on hand, including the host school Milford, Grand Ledge from the Lansing area and Kalamazoo Lloyd Norris made the drive to compete as well. The racing conditions could not have been more perfect. 72 degrees, partly sunny with a cool breeze and a dry course. The Dragons have run this course many times and know the challenges. The Lady Dragons were looking to have a solid showing with their varsity roster intact. Again, running strong and leading the Dragons was Verlinden, setting the pace for her teammates during the first mile. Bows would also start strong, running shoulder to shoulder with Verlinden, but pulled up with cramps and fell off the pace just after the first mile marker. She would rejoin the race, showing her toughness. Brighton and Grand Ledge were the class of the field, finishing the team scoring in first and second place. The top OAA team was Troy in fourth place. Lake Orion would finish eighth. Verlinden would finish the course strong and gain the lone podium for the Dragons coming in 19th. Lauren Duma would finish 34th, sophomore Mackie Shosky was 46th, Anika Russell 50th, and Alex Bowes 59th. Now onto the men's varsity 10. The Dragons were primed and ready, feeling good after their dominating performance at Anchor Bay. Facing tougher competition in the 12 team field, the Dragons took home their second straight victory by tallying 41 points, 10 ahead of the second place Brighton Bulldogs and 65 better than that of third place Milford Mavericks. Senior Clayton Kuiper was Lake Orion's top individual runner finishing in second place at 1644, followed by classmates Hung Bing Tang in third at 1646 and Will Hoovner in eighth at 1658.9. Of course, the Dragons have been visiting for years. Kensington Metro Park presents a challenge with the Tilly terrain, as we mentioned earlier, but head coach Stan Ford, who is in his 40th season, knows how to prepare his young men for the task. He said, quote, It was interesting today because a lot of guys in the top group, they ran as fast on this course as they did on the flat fast one last week. So we know there's improvement, Ford said. The Dragons are solid in their top 10. It will be tough to trim down to the typical seven runners as the season progresses, at Kensington and moving forward, the target on the Dragons' back just got a little bigger as they move into the OAA League races. Having a veteran team that can run in a pack with speed is going to make these Dragons a very tough team to beat. This pack running is what earned them the Avril Championship and five medalists in the top 20. The medalists were Kuiper 2nd, Tang 3rd, Hoovner 8th, Hayfley 9th, and Pearden 19th. The varsity men's team has been showing signs that 2021 could be a very special season. Loaded with seniors and a solid supporting cast, the Dragons have so far dominated their competition. 
Not only are they undefeated coming into the first OAA Red Jamboree, but they have been led by a different senior in each of their races this fall. The next test for these Dragons came on Tuesday, September 14th, when they hosted the OAA Red Division Jamboree on their home course at Lake Orion High School. Due to threatening weather, the meet was delayed by an hour and a half, and instead of the usual separation of the varsity and JV runners into separate races, both were combined together to move the meet along as the clouds rolled in. First up was the women's race. There were a lot of question marks on who would be the dominant team in 2021 since so many talented seniors moved on from 2020. The standout was a freshman from Oxford who raced out to a quick lead. Mallory Bigelow showed that she's one to watch in the years to come. The remainder of the Oxford Wildcats scoring five did what we've seen them do countless times in the past, run as a pack. This strategy paid off with a solid team win. Bigelow held her pace through the 3.1 mile course, taking the individual win in 19 minutes, 32 seconds. Troy was second, Rochester Adams was third. The Lady Dragons top finisher was freshman Addison Verlinden, who was 12th overall with a time of 21 minutes, 43 seconds. Injuries during this race saw three Dragons pull out before the finish. There's still a question, who will step up and fill the current leadership void on this Lady Dragons team? It's one that they hope to answer as quickly as possible. The remainder of the women's side of the OAA Red Race looks to be a tight one between Oxford and Troy. Both teams have solid depth and a nice mix of under and upperclassmen to lead their scoring five. Troy finished in 23rd at the 2020 D1 State Finals and looks to build on that experience, while Oxford has fallen just short of a State Finals berth so many times after their 2016 State Finals appearance. This battle will be fun to watch as the season rolls along. The Lake Orion Varsity men are not just the talk of the OAA Red, but all of Oakland County. Their performances so far this season have been nothing but victories and podiums for these hardworking runners. The Dragons left little doubt that they are the class of the OAA Red Division as they ran a near-perfect team race, scoring an amazing 17 points. It's been some time since we've seen a dominating performance from one team in the OAA Red. For the most part, Clarkson, Lake Orion, Rochester Adams, and Troy have battled within 5-10 to 10 points of each other for years. 2021 looks to be much different as the Dragons' senior class continues to blister the competition. Senior Adam Hayfley again led the field from wire to wire as he did at the Anchor Bay Invitational to start the season. The Dragons scoring five again combined their efforts running as a pack, all at the front, mind you, to take first through fourth place, with their last scoring runner taking seventh, just two positions away from a perfect team race. Coach Ford knows his senior class is special and one that does not come along every year. Though there's no real superstar on this squad like in years past, Ford does have five talented runners who are almost equal in their abilities. Add in a couple of experienced juniors who also know how to race, and you have the makings of a season to remember. Scoring for the Dragons were seniors Hayfley in first, Hong Bing Tang second, Clayton Kuiper third, Will Hoovner and junior Luke Pierdon seventh. Due to the poor weather mentioned earlier, both the varsity and JV races were combined to move the meet along faster. The seniors were very happy with their performance as this was the last race they would run on their home course. No tears were shed, but their eyes were looking ahead to a much bigger prize, a state finals berth. The journey to the Division I state finals really begins with the Holly Invitational held at Springfield Oaks Park. This Invitational is loaded with quality teams from all over Southeast and Mid-Michigan. The Dragons were tested against nine other Division I schools. Some even have recent state team title hardware on their shelves back home. If the Dragons have a strong showing at Holly, they will have a very good idea of where they stand on the state level. Well, the Dragons delivered in a big way at Holly. The Varsity 7 of seniors Adam Hayfley, Hong Bing Tang, Will Hoovner, Clayton Kuiper, juniors Luke Pearden, Eddie Cromwell, and freshman Sam Lopez all had the crowd floored by their team's performance. The Dragons won the overall title scoring a dominating 62 points, Pickney was second with 109, Plymouth third with 121, Dexter was fourth with 125 points. Lake Orion, Plymouth, and Dexter all had team top 20 finishes at the 2020 Division I state meet. Out of the 132 runners, the Dragons placed their scoring five all in the top 27. Four were in the top 14, and three in the top eight. How close did these Dragons run together? From LO's top finisher to their fifth was a shocking 56 second spread. That is the definition of pack running. Any cross-country coach would love to have a pack of runners like these Dragons. Earning medals once again was Tang, 6th, Hayfley, 7th, Kuiper, 8th, 
Hoovner 14th, and Luke Pearden 27th all made the podium and securing another win for the Dragons. The Holly Invitational also had junior varsity races, which saw the J men's JV squad put up a dominating performance as well. The Dragon JV5 were Elo Nathan Elo's Nathan Yi. The Dragon JV top five were Elo's Nathan Yi, second overall, Blake Peard in fourth, Dan Aranja, 15th, Jack Logston, 17th, and Mike Dracos, 23rd. The JV Dragons would score 62 total points, taking the JV title. Plymouth was second, Dexter was third. This performance by the JV squad shows the depth that Coach Ford has built at Lake Orion over his 40 years at the helm. It looks like the future is definitely secure for the Dragons men's program for years to come. The Varsity's women's races were also hotly contested, though the Lady Dragons struggled to make the medal podium. The only medal winner was the dynamic freshman Addison Verlinden, who was 23rd out of the 113 racers. She was also the fourth best ninth grader across the finish line in this stacked field, a fantastic sign for the future races. The Dragons scoring five was made up of for Linden, Lauren Dume, 40th, Mackie Shosky, 65th, Maddie Furig, 67th, and Kyra Andrews, 86th. Their scoring total was good for 12th out of 17 teams competing. The top three teams were Dexter, Salem, and Grand Blank, all with multiple medal winners in the day. The Lady Dragons look to heal some of their injured runners in the time for the next Invitational, which will be hosted by Waterford High School on September 24th. The LO men look to keep their season perfect at this meet as well. ONTV cameras will be there to capture the highlights, which will be on our next episode. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to OrionOnTV.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local pro programming at its best. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. And also make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time.